Messi and Ronaldo are two of the best players to grace the beautiful game, but one of them is the best to ever kick a football. Special thanks to both of Dominic and DB for collaborating and helping with various stats and charts. They do great on Twitter and I believe that they need more love and recognition. Their links are in the description if you want to check them out after finishing with the video of course. As you saw in the title, Messi is the better player and in this video I'm going to explain why. This is not your typical video when you only compare the two of them superficially and then the video's creator concludes by who's better. No, I'm not doing that. From the beginning I'm telling you that Messi is better. Also, this video is not a diss on Ronaldo. I'm saying this especially to the neutrals and the Ronaldo fanboys who are watching. When I say that Messi is better at something, it doesn't mean that Ronaldo sucks at it. Just like when we say that a Jaguar's jaw is stronger than that of a hyena's, it doesn't take from the fact that hyenas have lethal jaws too. In this video, I'm comparing everything about Lionel and Cristiano, from their goals, play styles, roles and abilities. And I'm also tackling serious subjects like why is the media forcing a comparison that shouldn't even exist. This is a summary of everything that was discussed about this duo from videos, forums, articles, tweets and debates in the real world and on the internet. This video is going to be technically long, for some it will feel like a gift from heaven finishing in a blink of an eye, for the others it's going to be stressful and filled with hard to swallow truths. So ladies and gentlemen, get some snacks and tie your seat belts because we're going on a ride. Goals. Messi and Ronaldo are both great goal scorers. The most popular way of comparing these two by nitpickers is by showing their goal scoring records. But by including some weird rules to misguide people from the truth. When people say Ronaldo, they think goal machine. When it's Messi, they say magical player. While not false at first sight, yeah Messi is magical and Ronaldo is obviously a great goal scorer. It still misleads fans on thinking that Ronaldo is the better goal scorer. Their goal record with club and country is as follows. As of the 8th of June 2019, Ronaldo scored 691 goals in 964 games, with a ratio of 0.71 goals per game. Messi on the other hand has 670 goals in 616 games, with a ratio of 0.82 goals. Not only he outperforms him in ratio, but he's only 21 goals away from Chris, while playing 148 games less. Give Messi one more season and he'll most likely overtake him. This year, Messi surpassed Ronaldo's number of goals in his club career. Now Messi has 603 and Chris has 601. And of course Ronaldo played more matches. Messi holds the record for the most goals in a calendar year, 91 in 2012. He also has the record for most goals scored in a single season, 73 in 2012. He also has the record for the most goals in a single league season, 50 goals. Messi won the golden boot for a record 6 times, Ronaldo is second with 4. During the 9 years where both Leo and Chris spent their careers together in Spain, Messi was 5 times the goal scorer and Ronaldo was 3. In those 9 years, Ronaldo scored 311 in 292 games and Messi scored 329 in 309 games. The ratio is very similar. 1.0650 for Chris and 1.0647 for Leo. The difference is 0.0003. What Ronaldo fans like to do is to compare Ronaldo's 9 years in Spain with Messi's whole 15 years in Spain. In those 9 years, Ronaldo was at the peak of his powers. And they want to compare it with Messi's 15 years since he was 17. This is just false nitpicking which reinforces some fans bias towards downplaying Messi to make Ronaldo look better. The logical one is to compare their career's total league goals. Since 2002 for Ronaldo and since 2004 for Messi. Chris has 419 in 546 games, a ratio of 0.76 goals per game. Leo has 419 in 452 games, a ratio of 0.92 goals per game. Coincidentally, as I was making this video, they have the same amount of goals scored in leagues alone. This makes the comparison effortless. What's fascinating is that Messi scored as much as Ronaldo while playing 96 games less. Even if you exclude Cristiano's first four seasons from the equation, he'll still have a worse ratio. It's until you start counting from August 2006 that his ratio is slightly better than that of Messi's. So Messi has the better ratio, the same number of goals, two more golden boots while playing three seasons, which means 96 games less. Champions League Fans call Ronaldo Mr. Champions League and somehow Messi can't score against English teams and etc etc which is untrue. 
Ronaldo holds the record for the most goals scored in the UCL, 127 goals. Messi is second with 112. However, Leo has the better ratio, 0.83 per game, and Chris has 0.75. Mr. Champions League has less goals than Mr. Butler, the irony. Well, we are not excluding the fact that Ronaldo has the record for the most goals scored in a single season. Ronaldo also has the upper hand with the UCL goal scorer award, 7 goals against 6 for Messi. Well now to the domestic cups. Certain fans downplay this competition. Some of them don't like to include this in their calculations. Messi has a ratio of 0.7, Chris has 0.6. I'm 100% sure that if Ronaldo had the better ratio, you'd see more people talking about the domestic cup. Of course, I covered the FA, the Spanish, and the Italian Cups. I'm not going to exclude anything just to make Messi look better. I'm not doing that, and I do not need to do it. I'm only presenting facts and truth. I covered their goal stats with clubs. Now let's jump to their international stats with Portugal and Argentina. International. There's a lot to cover here. First, and obviously their goal per game ratio. 0.55 for Chris and 0.51 for Messi. Ronaldo is more prolific but this stat still doesn't show us the full picture. Messi has the upper hand in friendly games with a ratio of 0.68 against 0.36 for Ronaldo. Well, yeah, friendly matches are not that serious, but what's good about them is that footballers play against teams from all over the world, from Germany, Uruguay, the US, Japan, etc. Whereas in World Cup qualifiers and Continental Cups, players are bound to their country's geographical position. Speaking about Continental Cups, their goal ratio in official games is for Chris with 0.61 goals per game against 0.41 for Messi. Ronaldo has a better goal scoring record. So this means he performs better for his national team, right? Yes, but actually no. This chart by error rating compares both of their goals by the quality of the opponents, excluding friendlies. The smaller the average rank, the better. So Messi scores against teams that are ranked 30 on average. On the other hand, Ronaldo scores against teams that are on average ranked 80. So Messi scores against better teams on average than Chris. But why? Well, in South America, they only play the qualifiers for the World Cup, as opposed to Europeans who have two qualifiers, one for the Euros and another for the World Cup. This gives Ronaldo a chance to encounter weaker teams more frequently. Because South America is comprised of 12 countries and only 10 of them challenge in the qualifiers, they put them all in one single group. So we have Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Colombia, and Paraguay all competing against each other. In Europe, 54 countries battle for 13 tickets to the World Cup. And because we have so much countries, it can't be the same format as in South America. So we make 9 groups of 6 teams. And you end up facing teams like Luxembourg, Latvia, Faroe Islands, Andorra, San Marino, Armenia, Malta, Liechtenstein, Moldova, etc, etc, etc. You get my point. 25% of the European teams are ranked 100 or lower in FIFA rankings, as opposed to 0% in South America that are ranked 100 or lower. And actually, all of the South American teams are ranked 70 or above. For example, in a game versus Andorra who was ranked 203 in 2016, Ronaldo scored 4 goals. Yep, playing against the 9th worst team in the world has its stats padding advantages. I think I talked a bit too much about this, and I'll just hop on the next category. But just for fun, how much do you think Messi would have scored if he played for Spain? 100? 150? Probably more. This would make a great video for the future. Now, let's compare their accuracy. Have you ever thought about how many attempts do Leo and Chris need to score one goal or how many shots per game they attempt? For starters, and just as an example, let's take the season's league numbers. In 34 games, Messi scored 36 and attempted 140 shots. Ronaldo scored 21 in 31 games and attempted 134 shots. So every 3.88 shots, Messi scores a goal. In the other hand, Ronaldo needs 6.8 shots to score a goal. This shows that Messi needs less chances to make the difference, and it also means that Messi is more precise. But this is not fair for Ronaldo. I'm not gonna give a conclusion based on a comparison between peak Messi and a 34-year-old Ronaldo. For that, we're gonna look at their last 10 club seasons. Here's the chart. To understand better, Ronaldo scored 478 goals and Messi scored 523. Messi needed less shots to score more goals. 165 shots less per 90 minutes than Ronaldo. Messi has simply the better finishing technique. This influences their goal scoring records because it impacts your chances. 
Messi misses less big chances than Ronaldo, 14.5 against 23 per season. Then we have expected goals. If you have no idea about this concept, go look it up for yourselves because it's long to explain. But basically, Messi outperforms Ronaldo again. So if they were expected to score 30 goals, Messi actually scores 36.2 and Ronaldo scores 30.8. Furthermore, Messi is consistent when it comes to outperforming his XG. And Chris is consistent when it comes to underperforming his expected goals. We talked a lot about stats. Now let's discuss how they score their goals. Ronaldo is a player who values power, strength. Messi values accuracy, technique. Their approach is different from each other. I'm not willing to compare hat-tricks, free kicks, braces or penalties or whatever. They have pretty much the same numbers. So when it comes to goals, what is something that one of them is good at that the other is not? Let's start with Ronaldo. Headers. He has a better heading ability because of his height and athletic body. And because stats only judge players based on their ability to defend and score with their headers. We forget that Messi's heading technique is superb. The guy can easily score baskets with his head, but he doesn't use his head as frequently as Chris. Ronaldo is also better in long range goals. I said long range, not outside the box. Around 30 meters plus. Why? Because he's heavier and has more power in his feet. Messi on the other hand is better at finesse goals, curving the ball into the net. He's also better at lobbing, shipping the ball over the goalkeeper. Ronaldo is far behind in both of them. Leo is the accurate guy and Ronaldo is the power guy. It's self-explanatory. What else? Dribbling and scoring. Messi can dribble 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 players, even the goalkeeper and score. Cristiano has never dribbled more than 3 players and scored. Even 3 players is not usual for him. Messi the other day scored after putting 3 guys on the ground. It's a very common thing for him. So here's a question. Imagine you're put in a situation where your team is losing, you must score. And they give you the choice between shooting the ball from 20 meters and shooting the ball from 30 meters. Anyone with enough brain cells will choose 20 meters because it's closer to the net and you have more chances to score. Remember, Ronaldo has a tendency to attempt scoring from long distances or the 6 yard box. But why? Two very different areas, one is harder to score from and the other is far easier to get a goal from. And now you might ask, is this relevant to our topic? The answer is quite simple, he lacks in dribbling ability. Instead of receiving the ball and dribbling to get to a better position, he usually shoots from anywhere or he passes the ball and positions himself in the penalty box. Long range shots are high risk, low reward attempts. And that's why he needs more attempts to score a goal compared with Lionel. Leo is the opposite, he's a far better dribbler. So he can take the ball himself, dribble past a few players and he closes the distance between him and the net, then he either passes or scores himself. 18-23 meters is a medium risk, medium reward situation. That's why he scores 25% of his shots, compared to 15% for Ronaldo. The other reason of why he has a better goal scoring ratio is because he has more options. He can dribble, then score from outside the box or inside it, curve it or ship it, you can easily mix these up, but you can't really mix up long range with heading or tap-ins. It's not only about scoring, it's how you score those goals. For example, we give two carpenters a task of making a chair. The first guy makes a simple functioning chair. The second guy goes one mile further and adds decoration, makes it comfortable, stronger, lighter and even bendable. So both of them achieve their task. Still people will value the second chair a lot more. I think I've had enough with goals. Let's jump to another category. I mentioned their dribbling abilities a couple sentences ago. Yeah, let's talk about dribbling. Dribbling ability. The difference here between the last category is immense. At least 90% of people agree that Messi is better at dribbling. Well, he's the best dribbler ever. This feels like comparing a mature lion to a cub. But I'm still gonna do it. There's a lot to talk about here. Like why is Leo so great and why did Ronaldo's dribbling take a huge blow in the last 5 seasons considering that he was pretty good at dribbling when he was younger. Ok, let's go. When we compare their overall or seasonal dribbling stats, we find that Messi is always on top. In the last 10 years, Messi had 2.5k successful dribbles, compared to Ronaldo's 1k dribbles in the same time period. 
Ronaldo's best league season was in 2009-2010 with 91 dribbles. Messi's worst league season was in 2015-2016 with 117 dribbles. His best one was in 2011 with 186. When Chris was 23 to 26 years old, he averaged around 100 dribbles per season. Leo in the same age averaged around 250 dribbles. Nowadays Ronaldo averages around 60 dribbles. Surprisingly Messi still averages around 200, with the 2017-2018 league season being the second best league season in total dribbles. He was 30 years old. There are two reasons for Messi's consistency and for Ronaldo's decline, their play style and their role. We'll begin with their play style. As I said previously, Ronaldo privileges power and speed, Messi is more on the technical side. After observing Ronaldo's dribbling for years now, I came up with the conclusion that he thrives on space. I mean he needs 10-20 meters ahead of him to dribble or outpace his opponent, but he rarely does it in tight spaces. Lionel thrives on both of them. Tight spaces or 20 meters ahead of him, it's all the same for Leo. He mixes speed, acceleration, body feints, switches of direction, and he sidesteps his opponents. His repertoire far exceeds that of Cristiano's. Leo has more moves and options to choose from. That's one of the reasons why he's the better dribbler. So why did Ronaldo's dribbling decline? Simple. As you grow older, you become weaker and slower. As you hit the age of 30, your maximum heart rate decreases, which lowers your oxygen's output. Less oxygen means that your muscles will underperform compared to the past. Football is a mix between aerobic and anaerobic exercises. Cristiano privileges strength, pace, and stamina. Now imagine 15 years of relying mostly on your athletic body and abilities, it will eventually burn you out. Getting worse at dribbling was inevitable. Messi is still consistent because he's great in one-on-one -on -one situations and tight spaces. Even though he dropped in speed as he grew older, like any other footballers, his other abilities helped sustain his dribbling statistics. And it's also because he never really relies on his physical abilities. But why is their approach in dribbling so different? Easy. Your ball control. Messi's close ball control is so exceptional that you'll hear people say things like, the ball is glued to his feet, he can go as fast as 33 km per hour and still keep the ball at a close range, not exceeding 1 or 2 feet. A prime example of this is his goal against Athletic Bilbao in the 2015 Copa del Rey. Because Ronaldo can't make the ball glued to his feet, he chooses occasions where there's enough space for him to tap the ball and run as fast as possible. And that's why he doesn't attempt dribbling that much. Because a scenario where you are granted a lot of space is not common. So he'll usually pass the ball to the back because he's not sure he'll make it. Sometimes he tries to dribble and he falls over. Useless showboating tricks that lead to nothing, they just waste time and effort. Dribbling and technique are simply not Ronaldo's cup of tea. The other aspect of their game that influences their dribbling stats and abilities is their roles. When he was a better dribbler, Cristiano played as a winger attacker. But as he started shifting his play to the 18th yard box to become a striker, his dribbling numbers decreased, and this coincides with the increase in goal scored, as shown in this chart right here. When he shifted to a striker role, he started scoring more goals. Messi started as a winger too. Then he became a false 9, and now he's a mix of an attacking midfielder and false winger. His dribbling and goal scoring stats do not depend on the position he plays. What we understand from this comparison is that Messi, wherever position and role he plays, the stats are the same, but Cristiano's stats changed when he switched roles. It's as if he needed to change to compete with Messi, especially in goal scoring. These heat maps show exactly and in more detail what I'm talking about. Now, after looking at these, you might start questioning the reasons why they choose to play like that. Why is Messi playing more deeply when he could stay closer to the penalty spot and increase his chances of scoring goals? Just like what Ronaldo does, the reason is quite obvious. Playmaking. Because he's an exceptional player, Messi has the ability and the luxury to drop deep and dictate the build-up, or the attacking phase of each play, which explains the heat maps. On the contrary, Rooney is not a playmaker. His vision and creativity are not on par with the conventional playmakers or passers, but he still puts up some good numbers. Messi has the most assists, 276 against 227 for Ronaldo, a ratio of 0.33 versus 0.23. So Messi has an assist every 3 games and Ronaldo every 4 games. Next up is expected assists. It's the likelihood that a pass will result in an assist. 
It measures the pass quality of a player, based on the type of a pass and the finishing location of the pass. In essence, it shows us if a given player is creating quality chances. In the last 5 seasons, Chris has been underperforming his XA by minus 0.52. In contrast, Messi is outperforming his XA by 2 assists. This tells us that Messi is making better quality passes and obviously taking more risks. The next logical step is to compare their big chances created. And again, Leo obliterates the opposition. He has 4 times more chances created on average in the span of the last 4 league seasons. The last statistic in the category, key passes. In the last 10 seasons, Leo made more key passes, 0.6 per 90 minutes on average more in the span of the last 10 seasons. Key passes are not a good measurement for quantifying a player's playmaking contribution, because they are basically a pass that precedes a shot. So if I give a pass to a teammate and he decides to shoot from 50 meters for no reason, far away of the goalpost, whether it's scored or not, it still counts as a key pass. Furthermore, Chris has lower quality key passes because he has 4 times less big chances created and he underperforms his XA. Just make a comparison between how much assists Messi has compared to his total big chances and do the same for Ronaldo. For example, last season between the league and the Champions League, Messi assisted 16 goals, he created 41 big chances. Ronaldo assisted 10 goals, he created 13 big chances. You see, Messi created 3 times more big chances but he only has 1.6 times more assists. There's even a statistic that claims that Messi should have had at least 25 assists this season. In conclusion, and for the stat fanatics, Messi is statistically a better passer than Ronaldo. Now let's actually talk about passing, real passing, besides stats. Both of them are capable of making great passes, that's obvious. But what separates the two is consistency. Leo is consistently consistent at providing his teammates with high quality clear cut chances and true balls. And Ronaldo is consistently inconsistent at doing the same thing. If you are not convinced, go watch any highlight reel or their actual games and you'll see for yourself. We can easily claim that Messi is the greatest playmaker in history. I said playmaker, not passer. You can easily claim him as the best in this field. Some will say no he's not, others say it's debatable. Yeah, if it's debatable, it still means that he's one of the best in history. In contrast, Chris is not. Unlike Chris, Leo is the best in one certain type of passing, and it's true balls. Either on the ground or in the air, Messi with his incredible vision will find his teammates in the most unexpected occasions. And through balls obviously are the hardest in football and the most risky ones. We also should not forget that Messi's link-up play is unparalleled. He's one of the rare players who have consistently scored magnificent pinpoint goals after performing fast one-twos with his teammates. This is proof that Messi's ball control, off-the-ball movements, creativity and anticipation are immense. Leo is better at playmaking for an important reason. He is more of a team player, that's it. He really doesn't care much about individual success. If he could, he would switch individual awards for team trophies. This is not a video rant on a Cristiano or something. It might feel like one for some, but it's not. I can't help it. Messi's just too good. However, Messi is not complete, of course. But he's still the closest player in history to that title. Ronaldo is one of the greatest goal scorers in history. And that's it. Now I have covered most of the essentials, goal scoring, dribbling, technique and playmaking. When it comes to trophies, Messi has more than Cristiano. Well, I don't believe that trophies should be a measurement for comparing their qualities. They should only be used for comparing their legacies. If Ronaldo had more trophies, you will see more people undermining Messi's trophy record, which doesn't make any sense. Maradona, Cruyff and Pele have less trophies than Ronaldo, but the general consensus ranks them above him. Who's more clutch? When it comes to finals, Messi again has more goals and assists. There is even a better way to determine it, by looking at a certain stat from whoscored.com. After the end of every game, they reward the best performer, the title of the man of the match. In the last 10 years, Messi has gathered the most, 237, Cristiano is second with 140. Self-explanatory. There's a myth that I want to debunk in a minute, about Messi not performing as well as Ronaldo in international games, in their respective careers. Tell me, how many best player awards did they win in tournaments with their countries? Ronaldo 0, Messi 2, the World Cup Golden Ball in 2014 and Copa America's best player award. 
Who was the best at his peak? Ronaldo is easier to quantify. I can safely say that in 2012, he was at the peak of his powers, scoring 69 goals and assisting 17 goals, and even being a better dribbler overall. Because of his consistency and his qualities in different aspects of the game, you can't determine his peak. 2012, Messi had more goals. In 2015, he was more complete, more of a playmaker. 2009, he was a great dribbler, more agile and faster. In 2018, he has become a lot better at set pieces while still keeping his qualities in other areas of the game. I can go on and talk about how these players are treated differently by the opposition. One is constantly being man-marked and surrounded by multiple players, and the other is marked once in a blue moon. A journalist asked Giorgio Collini about how to stop these two. For Ronaldo, he said, you try to not leave him alone, don't let him shoot on his right foot. And for Leo he said, just make the sign of the cross. Which means only a deus ex machina can help you against him. Go on YouTube or any platform that supports and shares videos or any documentary and you always find footage of the young Messi, teenage Messi, kid Messi, doing keep ups until his knees are tired, going solo against the whole defense, doing unimaginable tricks for a kid of his age casually scoring super hat-tricks every match. You'll find tens of videos showcasing his abilities. In fact, Messi was a football phenomenon when he was still a 12-year-old. Chris was not. You never find any clips demonstrating any second of his gameplay as a kid. You'll even find clips on Johan Cruyff and Diego Maradona. And they are 3-4 decades older than Chris. I don't need to go further. My argument is clear as crystal. Finally, let's head to the last part of the topic. Why are there people who still think that Ronaldo is better than Messi, and why did this so-called rivalry come to exist? For starters, players have agents. Agents are people who handle business and legal deals for professional athletes. From negotiating contracts, sponsor deals, handling taxes, etc. But the problem with Messi is that his agent is his dad. His dad is not a really influential guy, with businesses all around the world, with multiple connections compared with Ronaldo's agent, Jorge Mendes. Ronaldo is quite the lucky guy here because his agent Mendes is a Portuguese businessman and a multimillionaire who owns an agency that provides services to more than 50 players like De Maria, James Rodriguez, Pepe, De Gea, Quintrao, Thiago Silva, Quaresma, etc. etc. Most of them are from Portugal. The difference between these two agents is staggering. One is not present in the public scene and the other is recognized as the best football agent by his peers. He even won 8 Best Agents of the Year awards. Yeah, even these guys have awards. <laughs> Insane. Having the best agent is still not enough to rival Messi in popularity. And that's when Florentino Perez comes into action. Papa Perez. Perez is a billionaire businessman. His net worth exceeds $2 billion. For comparison, Barca's current president, Bartomeu, has a net worth of $100 million. Perez runs Spain's largest construction company, Grupo ACS. Perez is a Real Madrid fan. He loves Real Madrid. And as an accomplished businessman, he knows how to attract sponsors and investors. And one of the best ways to do it is to have the Ballon d'Or winner in Real Madrid. In the football world, winning trophies and having the best players is the best way to attract money sponsors and that's why in the last years the Ballon d'Or winner was always won by a Real Madrid player. Well, if you are still not convinced, in 2002 they won the UCL. Zidane was the first contender for the Ballon d'Or fourth. Until, guess what happened next? France crashes in the World Cup from the group stages. Brazil wins the World Cup. Ronaldo finishes as the goal scorer after netting two goals in the final. Perez can't ignore this opportunity. He buys him from Inter Milan, he lands a three-year deal with Siemens Mobile after not having a shirt sponsor the previous season. A few months later, Ronaldo wins the Ballon d'Or. Acquiring the best players and winning awards helps football clubs have easier deals with investors. It also helps that Real Madrid are the capital's team. They are backed by the bank, the press, Messi plays for Barcelona, they told Catalan, the press writes in Catalan. There is political and historical tension between these two parties. In Madrid, they speak in Spanish, Spanish is more popular, France football even selects a journalist every year from Madrid, who works for Diario, which mainly covers Real Madrid's news. In the football world, you can easily manipulate who wins this or who doesn't. For example, in the 2018 Ballon d'Or, one of the journalists who was listed for voting did not even exist. I actually made a video about this topic 6 months ago, the link is in the description. Social media presence is a new factor that helps celebrities or individuals to grow in popularity. When you compare Leo's and Cristiano's media presence, you find that Ronaldo is taking it more seriously. 
Ronaldo is present in Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Messi is only present on Facebook and Instagram. The frequency of posting is what made Cristiano have more followers overall on social media. Let's take Instagram as an example. It's the platform where they have the most followers. Cristiano posts every day, sometimes twice a day. In fact, he has 2.6 publications since the day he created his account. Leo's uploads are inconsistent. Sometimes he'll post back to back for 3 consecutive days and sometimes he'll go on hiatus for more than a month. He has less than 500 publications since the day he joined. Even when Leo won the 2015 Ballon d'Or, he didn't post anything about it. Not even a picture of him with the award. Compared to Ronaldo, who posted 7 pictures with the 2017 Ballon d'Or award. The lesson to be learned here is not to follow Messi's approach for marketing your work. Messi speaks on the pitch. Ronaldo compensates that lack with always being present on social media. And there's nothing wrong with that. The fake donations. Giving donations is a great gesture. With it, you can hit two birds with one stone. The first is doing good deeds and the second is enhancing your public image. The $7.8 million fake donation to Nepal's earthquake victims. The rumors were rejected by Save the Children NGO. Recently, the rumors around his donation to Palestine were also classified as fake. The issue with these rumors is that it's hard to undo them. When it's spread by the media at a large scale, if it is not corrected in a few hours, it's already too late. Besides the rumors or fake donations, both of these players genuinely care for children and helping oppressed people. They are humans after all. What's keeping this rivalry alive is the marketers. Money, it's not the media. The media works as a mediator between investors and fans. Props to whoever is pulling the strings and marketing this supposed rivalry. Props to them they found an easy target. Social media helped fool this rivalry. They found a perfect scenario. Two opposing parties that always fight each other. So they create more tension by providing goods and merch. In short, this rivalry generates a lot of cash. Just like Apple and Samsung in the tech world or PlayStation and Xbox in video games, Republicans and Democrats in politics. Competition generates more money. Comparing these two players is a disservice to Lionel Messi. Leo is more than just goals. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm thankful to the people of Twitter, YouTube and the ones from Reddit too. I'm also thankful to both of my friends Dominic and DB for helping me with various stats and charts. Dominic is a Messi fanatic who makes great tweets. Sometimes he surprises you with the most unheard of Messi stats. Great guy. DB makes football charts, he compares players, etc. He makes better charts than the ones I showed you. Here's a sample of things he makes. Beautiful stuff. Both of their links are in the description. I have some really good ideas coming soon, so subscribe and activate the bell to not miss any of my future uploads. You can also go and watch my previous video on Azar, or the one about why Argentina sucks in the World Cup, or the one about the reasons that football awards like the Ballon d'Or are not serious anymore. Thanks for watching. Yeah, see ya.